Good evening. Uh, today we'll be studying about the anatomy of the abdomen. Our uh, main focus will be on the anterior abdominal wall and the adult anatomy of the various abdominal organs like uh, your uh, organs of the uh, uh, digestive tract, liver, uh, kidneys, spleen and pancreas. Uh, the most important aspect of uh, today's class is going to be on development of GI, uh, the development of the GIT and the organs associated with the GIT and the blood supply. Most of the questions in particular are uh, asked uh, in relation to the blood supply. So uh, we'll begin with uh, the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, first of all, if you look at the abdomen, it is divided into nine quadrants. Uh, the uh, compartment in the center is known as umbilical. These are, it, it, these are imaginary plates. Uh, so uh, the central uh, compartment is your umbilical. Uh, along the midclavicular plane, you uh, divide it in, uh, into uh, three vertical compartments. The uh, compartment is known as epigastric. The inferior uh, central compartment is known as supracubic. Uh, right and left hypochondria uh, are the regions uh, on either side of your epigastric and right and left lumbar are regions on either side of umbilical and right inguinal and left inguinal are regions uh, on either side of supracubic. There won't be any question as such uh, which will be asked about these uh, abdominal regions but uh, it is good to know in terms of uh, which uh, organs are. Rarely there can be questions on uh, trauma or injury so it's better to know that uh, if there is an injury in the uh, right lumbar, uh, you know, right lumbar region. So uh, the organ affected. In all probability, the organ which can be affected will be uh, organs in the right lumbar region, which can include your uh, ascending colon. So it's it's good to know this just so that you are able to uh, relate it. Is my voice audible? Is the video code just? Give me a thumbs up or something so that I know we can uh, continue. All right. Okay. So the anterior abdominal lay, uh, wall from uh, outside to inside, from outermost layer to the innermost layer is uh, made up of skin, superficial fascia, deep fascia, muscles, extra peritoneal fascia, and parietal peritoneum. Uh, diagrammatically, this diagram is also uh, showing these layers. Uh, so skin is loosely attached all over the anterior abdominal wall, except at the umbilicals, where uh, there is a scar, uh, which is the point of attachment of the umbilical cord during embryogenesis. The superficial fascia is divided into compass fascia, that is the superficial fatty layer, which is continuous with superficial fat. In the scrotum, it is modified. This superficial fascia in the scrotum is modified as thin, smooth, muscular layer, which is known as dartos muscle. Scarpa's fascia, just a second, excuse me. Get it, get it, get it for me. I'm no disturbing my arms. Am I sitting in the class? Tell me. No disturbing. So, uh, this campus fascia is uh, continuous as your uh, dartos muscle. The membranous layer of the superficial fascia or the deep membranous layer is your scarpa fascia. Uh, in the midline, inferiorly it forms a tubular sheath. 
of the penis and below the perineum it is attached to the pubic arch and in this region where it is attached to the pubic arch we use the term polys fascia uh, don't get into too much uh, of details about the fascia just the name is also enough you, you it's sufficient to know that campa is a superficial fascia scarpa is the deep membranous layer and uh, where it is attached to the pubic arch this fascia is known as polys fascia so this is just the diagrammatic representation of the uh, same uh, this fatty layer uh, is your campa fascia and the deep membranous layer is your scarpa fascia of how it's forming the tortuous uh, muscle now the deep fascia now it's just a thin layer of connective tissue which is uh, covering your muscle the next layer is the muscular layer this is important now there are three broad thin sheets of muscles with aponeurosis in the front what do you understand by aponeurosis where two muscles meet so they form an aponeurotic tendon so the three a broad you know these uh, broad muscles on the anterior abdominal wall are external oblique in, internal oblique and transversus so on either side in the midline there is a wide vertical muscle which is known as rectus abdominis which uh, you know runs uh, completely vertically uh, in the midline and the aponeurosis of the three sheets of the external oblique internal oblique and uh, transversus will pass forward and they will enclose this muscle to form a rectus sheath uh i can let you all know where, where you need to you need to pay, pay attention for this section for anterior abdominal wall the points of focus are the layers the names of the fascia and uh, the contents of the inguinal vena rest all even if you just remember the names it's going to be fine they, they haven't been too many questions so your uh, external most layer is your external oblique layer it originates from your uh, 5th to 12th rib and inserts into into the z, uh, zipoid process linea alba pubic crest pubic tubercle and iliac crest the nerve supply is from the thoracic uh, plexus from t7 to t t12 and uh, from the lumbar plexus the the nerves of the lumbar plexus which supply this are ilio hypogastric and ilio linguinal the main action of this muscles is rotation of your trunk also it uh, plays a accessory role in post expiration defecation micturition parturition and vomiting so this if at all uh, the actions of external oblique are important sometimes uh, you can be given a question all of the following are actions of external oblique with the exception of so uh, origin insertion it's okay if you are not able to remember but uh, you know origin is, uh, it, but actions are more important for these muscles now in the external oblique there is a triangular shaped defect in the external um, oblique aponeurosis immediately above and medial to pubic tubercle which is called the superficial inguinal ring so around here there's a defect uh, in your external oblique muscle known as superficial inguinal ring and what passes through this superficial inguinal ring is different for males and females in females the round ligament of uterus will pass through it in the males spermatic cord passes through it and it carries external spermatic fascia to form the uh, from the margins of this uh, ring so remember uh, there is a slight difference in anterior abdominal uh, wall anatomy in males and females this is the point of difference the uh, content passing through your inguinal ring now between the anterior and superior iliac spine and pubic tubercle lower border of aponeurosis is folded back on itself to form your inguinal ligament so if you see between your uh, iliac spine and your uh, pubic tubercle the lower border of external oblique muscle is folded on itself to form the inguinal ligament we'll come on to the inguinal canal later 
The internal oblique muscle originates from lumbar fascia, iliac crest, lateral two-thirds of the inguinal ligament, inserts into the three ribs and their costal cartilages, deepoid process, linea alba, synthesis pubis. Nerve supply is again same from T7 to T12 and L1. Branches are same, iliohypogastric and iliolinguinal. The actions. Now it supports the abdominal contents compresses the abdominal content, uh, content, assisting in flexion and rotation of trunk, also assists in post expiration. So the actions are also pretty much similar of external and internal oblique. The lower fibers of internal oblique will join to form, join from similar fibers of the transversus muscle to form a conjoint tendon. 